for June 9th, 2013. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Going to be running through um, some pairs here after um, the busy day that we had on Friday. Um, some very interesting setups going into next week. So um, some very uh, nice setups to take a look at. We're going to run through a bunch of them. And I'll, as always, I'll take uh, questions and requests. Please take a moment to pause the recording if you're watching the recording and read the risk disclaimer that's now on your screen. Uh, if you are here with me, please take a moment to quickly look over the risk disclaimer and then we'll jump to the charts. All right. All right, so real quick, I'm going to run through uh, some things that we have on the calendar for this week. Um, we have the RBNZ uh, cash rate, rate statement uh, and press conference. That's on Wednesday after the U.S. close, so another low liquidity, uh, high impact release at 5 o'clock uh, on Wednesday this week. Uh, we have Bank of Japan press conference, uh, British manufacturing numbers. Uh, German constitutional court ruling is expected on the ECB's outright monetary transactions policy. Uh, so keep your eye on that. Um, that actually could be a very dicey issue. Uh, I have to do a lot more, uh, a lot more, and a lot more careful research on. But uh, it's definitely something to keep your eye on in the euro this week. Uh, we have Australian unemployment numbers. That's on Wednesday night, uh, my time. Thursday we have the core retail sales for the U.S. and then weekly employment claims. And then Friday, we have Canadian manufacturing sales and the University of Michigan. Uh, so other than the RBNZ and that constitutional court we ruling, it's a much lighter week than the one we saw last week, uh, which I think actually could be good for the markets, let them sort of digest some of the busyness that we've seen. Uh, and it's also good for um, a lot of the setups that I'm watching. Uh, very Some very clean technical setups out there. Um, that will benefit, I think, from sort of a lower volatility environment. Uh, we're going to start with E-mini futures here. So this is S&P futures. Um, I want to, I talked about this on my uh, my moving average video on Friday. So if you watch that, uh, it's going to be a bit of a rehash. Uh, but I do think it's very important to talk about, as I think that it will have a very strong impact on risk appetite going forward uh, for this week, and I think even next week, and maybe even the week after. Uh, so for the most part, uh, lately, I have been somewhat bearish on equities uh, as I you know, expected that this rally would start to roll over. We finally did get a rollover. Uh, we lost maybe 3 or 4% in the last two weeks. Um, but I think that it, that uh, downward momentum is over for the time being. Uh, I think bears had their opportunity. Uh, they really had a very good chance. Um, to push this market even lower. And then on Thursday, they really dropped the ball in the afternoon session. Uh, so you can see here this candle here. This is a daily chart of E-mini futures. This is June 6th. That's the Thursday of last week. Um, this candle was really their opportunity. Um, we pushed below this key 50-day EMA. You can see how significant that EMA has been here and here. Uh, and even further back here, it was significant as well. Uh, we pushed below it. Um, and then we've also pushed below a 50% fib of the rally off of this last pullback, the one that took us down to 1530. Uh, and we had, if we could have closed below there, I think we would have a completely different market um, outlook than we do right now. But we couldn't close below there in the afternoon session. The market reversed. The Dow gain ended up like having like a 300 point reversal. Um, the S&P had maybe a 40, 30, 40 point reversal. Um, so we ended up closing the day above that 50% fib, above that 50-day EMA, uh, and then I think we look set to we look poised to head higher. Uh, Friday we got nice follow-through on that reversal on Thursday. This is a very powerful reversal candle. We got confirmation of it on Friday, and now we're testing this breakout point here, this yellow trend line. The fact that we held that 50% fib on a closing basis uh, twice, really, we tested it on Wednesday and then on Thursday again. Uh, to me, suggests that we are in for new highs. Uh, really, the measured move of this kind of um, FIB setup is 
the 100% extension, which is actually as high as 1750. Uh, so we really could be in for a 110 point S&P uh, rally, really, I think over the next two to three weeks, um, maybe even really less than that, maybe a week and a half to two weeks, depending on exactly what kind of momentum we have. Uh, the jobs report on Friday, um, not good enough to really warrant the Fed withdrawing stimulus in June and not really bad enough uh, to spark really deep set fears in the state of the U.S. economy. Uh, so it's kind of just business as usual, I think, from that release, and that should really help equities uh, push higher. Now, the thing that the problem is, is that usually when I see this kind of equity setup, I will be looking to get long Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Kiwi dollar, short dollar, CAD, etc. as the dollar usually uh, suffers in a risk on environment. The problem, though, is that it hasn't been as consistent of a correlation lately. Uh, so I'm still, uh, I do expect the dollar to weaken still over the next couple of weeks, um, but I'm way more uh, cautious about looking for setups um, on the dollar pairs because that correlation has been somewhat um, broken down lately. It's going to start with dollar yen. Uh, one of the reasons why that dollar correlation has been beat up lately uh, is because dollar yen has been so weak. Uh, we saw on Thursday, a 3% sell-off, uh, which is just almost unheard of uh, in the FX markets. I mean, it even caught CNN's or sorry, CNBC's attention, which is when you know that something unusual happened in Forex. They're not usually big on talking about the FX markets. Um, but then, again, another failure, really, to sustain any sort of bearish pressure. On Friday, we pushed below that 100-day EMA here in green. We touched 95, and then we closed up at 97.54. So another massive 250-point reversal candle here on uh, dollar yen. So I think again, dollar yen also destined to head higher in the near term. Uh, really, maybe up as high as 100. Uh, another 250 pips higher, where we'll run into this potential right shoulder opportunity to perhaps then finally roll over and maybe start a major um, breakdown lower. Uh, but I do see more upside. Uh, near term in dollar yen. Again, the problem is, is that there's not a very clean setup here because really if you're going to buy it here, you need a stop below this reversal candle, which is a 250 pip stop. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on dollar yen on the shorter term time frame to see if we can find a nice consolidation pattern uh, to play a breakout trade higher. Uh, but dollar yen, I do expect to continue higher. And that may be enough to sort of push the dollar higher in general. If we look at the dollar index, you can see here on, we've had this massive sell-off uh, really starting on the 30th of May um, that pushed the dollar index much, much lower. All right, we're now below, uh, we're close pretty much right at this 200-day EMA. We cut through the 50 and 100 without really any problem whatsoever. Um, so it really is a very tenuous um, position that the dollar index finds itself in right now. Again, we could see some sort of rally back up towards 83.25 to complete a right shoulder before falling lower again, kind of similar to what dollar yen looks like. Um, so we'll see about that. You can see that there are some distinct similarities between dollar yen uh, and the dollar index. So, you know, dollar yen may be the pair that's sort of leading um, the dollar lately, which is not really uh, the usual state of affairs. Um, so, like I said, I'm a little bit wary about dollar pairs. Uh, Euro dollar, I like to the upside, though. Um, uh, as wary as I am about it, this is a very attractive setup. We did break above these recent highs. Uh, we've now, what, we touched a high of just above 133. We pulled back to retest these highs. I would like to see some more, maybe another day's worth of consolidation here above these highs before another break higher, uh, really to maybe test 135. Um, or a little bit uh, beyond that as well. We drop it down to the four-hour chart. You can see kind of better what I'm looking at. Um, this, these highs don't quite translate as well on a four-hour basis, but the general idea is that we'll see some consolidation here above this breakout point uh, before another strong move higher on euro dollar. Again, um, the ECB didn't really do anything to rock the boat last week. Um, so we'll see if that constitutional court ruling this week does anything. But for right now, the euro dollar does look like it's poised to 
head a little bit higher. We broke above this 50% FIB, which capped uh, price back here uh, in late April. Um, the six, we didn't quite make it up to the 618. That's 133.41. So that would be the next level that I'd be keeping my eye on. Uh, but I do think that we could see some consolidation, let these moving averages catch up uh, before euro dollar continues higher. Uh, euro Aussie still would love to see a euro Aussie pullback. Um, have not really gotten as low as I wanted it to go. Um, let me clear some of these. All right, so. Uh, I was looking for a move back up to 133. We really only got as low as 133.65. I wasn't willing to take on those extra 65 pips, and so I missed out on a pretty sizable move higher. Um, I do still think that there is possibility that we could retest this um, uh, breakout point. And if we do, I would love, love, love to get long uh, off that 130. At this point, it'd be closer probably to 134 than 130. Um, the reason that I think that is, one, we have this nice daily potential reversal candle. Two, I just showed you euro dollar, and to me, euro dollar upside is limited by about 100, maybe 120 pips. Aussie dollar, on the other hand, considering the massive beating that Aussie dollar has taken lately, I really think that we have like almost six, now nah, closer to 500 pips of upside on Aussie dollar uh, before we really run into some major resistance. Uh, I really think that the next um, couple weeks we could see a significant Aussie dollar correction higher. Um, again, it will depend a little bit on what that Aussie employment number uh, comes out as. But really, I mean, you can see the distance that we've started to put in from the key moving averages. Uh, where the 200-day EMA is trading at 102.35 right now whereas the market is at 94, it's like a 900 pip difference. Um, that's not right, yeah, 800 pip difference. Uh, so pretty significant gap here between those significant EMAs. To me, it suggests that the market is a little stretched. You can see really from uh, July, price didn't deviate that far from the moving averages. Uh, now this significant breakdown um, really, I think, is primed for a correction. Back up towards maybe parity, uh, so about 500 pips higher, um, or even perhaps as high as like 101.50 or so. Uh, the trick is going to be finding a setup here on Aussie dollar. Um, it's a somewhat difficult pair to trade lately. That's actually an understatement. It's been an extraordinarily difficult pair to trade lately. Uh, if we drop it down to the hourly chart, you can see we do have this potential double bottom. Uh, ideally, my ideal setup here for Aussie dollar is to play a uh, breakout trade higher, uh, basically get above 95.50 or so, and, and uh, hope that uh, we continue to, to correct to the upside. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on that, uh, this potential double bottom type scenario here. Um, there is some work that really needs to be done on Aussie dollar to start a correction, uh, but I do think we could see one, when we see one start, it could start to squeeze higher pretty quickly. Um, Let's take a look at dollar CAD. All right, so dollar CAD, one, you have to keep in context. Uh, Friday, we saw record setting employment numbers from the Canadian economy. Um, the, they added something like 90,000 jobs or something, uh, which is the best ever. 16,000 was the expected figure. You could see the CAD, uh, dollar CAD sold off. Pretty hard, easily breaking through this very pretty potent support area. Uh, in testing this 618% FIB and 100 day EMA confluence, uh, basically 101.60, we ended the day about 30 points higher from there. Uh, this actually could be if you are on the bandwagon that the dollar corrects uh, and that the dollar strengthens from here, dollar CAD is the, absolutely the pair you want to play that. Um, Again, so you really, the setup is long, pretty much as close to market as possible or any lower uh, with a 101.50 stop and you're looking for targets above 104.50. Um, as that 618 holds, we could very easily see uh, a very nice one, two, three move higher. Uh, it would really challenge 105.50, I would think. 
Uh, so if you do want to be uh, bullish the US dollar, dollar CAD is absolutely uh, the pair to do it against since I'm bullish Aussie dollar and at least not terribly bearish dollar CAD. That means Aussie CAD also deserves your attention to the upside. Uh, again, another just ridiculous move lower. Uh, like this Friday candle is absurd. Uh, let's see. Friday we traded as high as 98.55 and as low as 96.33. So over 200 pip, 200 pip range on Aussie CAD. Uh, it's down a thousand, over a thousand pips since April 15th. Uh, so this double top formation played out really well uh, if you were willing to hold your shorts for the entire trip down. Um, I do think that this is a pair that is due as well for some sort of retracement. Again, you're bottom picking, uh, so look for, I drop it down to the hourly chart, start finding opportunities to try to get long, any sort of breakout, uh, inverse head and shoulders, double bottoms, anything to give me an opportunity to catch that move, that correction higher. Uh, first major resistance uh, on Aussie CAD is uh, 9780 or so, which is the 50, 50 hour EMA and the previous swing low. Um, then I would be watching this trend line. That comes in at around 98.25, so still 170 pips higher. Uh, so there is some good um, upside potential for um, Aussie CAD, but again, you have to find the setup, and right now there just isn't one there uh, to find. Uh, but I do like that pair higher, at least in the abstract. Um, what's it, euro dollar? Let's look at pound dollar. Daily chart of pound dollar. Okay, this still remains what I'm looking for. Um, move basically down to around 153. 153.25, somewhere in that area. Uh, if we get it, any sort of initial uh, dollar strength at the open, pound dollar would be a good opportunity to fade that, get longer around 153.50 or so, uh, and look for a move back up towards uh, 157.90 to start, uh, and then you kind of go from there, 157.90 being the 6.8% fib. Uh, technically, uh, it's worth I mean, it's worth noting we did hold that 50% fib here on a closing basis. Uh, on Thursday, we spiked above it, couldn't close above it. Friday, we also spiked above it, couldn't close above it. Uh, so bears do have an opportunity to push price lower, uh, but I'm going to be a buyer uh, on dips on pound dollar um, for at least to move up towards 158 or so, and then I'll start to reevaluate and see maybe um, maybe start looking for uh, short opportunities. Kiwi dollar, another tough pair to trade. Um, again, breakout trade it worked really well if you had the patience to hold it. Um, problem is that you can see this insane choppiness that we've had on Kiwi dollar. I mean, these are major moves to the upside and downside. It's general sort of fall lower, uh, but we've had lots of, of stop grabbing uh, along the way. RBNZ this week, we'll be really looking at the RBNZ to see if they're going to say something along the lines of um, they're looking to intervene in the in the Forex markets again. Um, again, they did admit to some intervention uh, to weaken the New Zealand dollar. Uh, so if they're still looking to do that, it's going to be hard for the New Zealand dollar to rally. Um, but, you know, it is another beaten down trade. Uh, but really, I don't. I don't really want to buy Kiwi. I'd rather buy the Australian dollar. I really don't want to trade Kiwi much at all right now. Um, it's really choppy. It's really ugly. Um, there are just other pairs that I would rather focus on that I think are a little bit more clear. Um, but if you're looking to trade it, uh, a break back above 79 could open up a move towards 80, and then from there you'd look for a break of 80, 50, or 80.40 or so uh, to open up a move back up towards 82.80, and then you kind of have to go from there. Oops, that's not a real pair.
dollar krona, um, which I love trading. Um, I'm not sure if any of you do. I think it's a great pair. Um, Swedish krona right now sitting right on top of daily moving average support. Uh, the 100 day EMA is now held four days in a row. Uh, but we have not really managed any sort of significant bounce. Uh, the bounce that we had on Friday got sold down pretty hard. Uh, and I think if we can really break below 6.5, we could see a move down towards 6.35 um, again pretty quickly, um, leading to some more, again, general dollar weakness. Aussie yen. Again, Aussie yen, like most of the other yen pairs, ended Friday with a massive reversal candle. Euro yen, massive reversal candle. Watch Euro yen for that breakout potential. That's one sort of semi-clean yen setup that's going on right now. For the most part, though, the yen to me is pretty much untradeable this week, at least in the near term. If you want to short a yen pair, if you want to be like really superhero brave about it, pound yen is definitely the one you want to short. Pretty much at market with a 152.80 stop, which is basically a 100 pip stop right now, but that's the best you're going to get on yen pairs uh, because of how volatile they've been lately. CAD yen. Again, massive. And this fib is useless, but then. Again, massive reversal candle, 93 was the low. We Then we rallied 265 pips to 95.60. Um, I don't really, I mean, look at basically 97 or so for resistance, but that's about it. Gold, for those of you that are big gold traders, and I'm pretty not happy about gold right now. I need to delete these because this didn't work out. Okay, so we do have this massive bearish candle here on Friday for gold. Uh, if you were to short it, your stop would be above 1425. Uh, if you're going to try to buy it, I don't actually know what you'd be looking at, so I wouldn't be looking to buy it. Uh, I would maybe try buying it a little bit lower. We'd draw a trend line connecting these lows and give buying it at 1365 a shot. Uh, but still, I prefer to sell gold than buy it. I still think that this massive drop, all this is doing, all everything since the 16th of April has been just processing that this massive move lower that we had. And as long as we continue to move sideways, uh, I think we're at risk for another sizable sell-off lower. Silver, okay, this is one setup for silver. Um, did not going to play out. We did break again. Now we're going to close below this bottom of the triangle. So silver does look poised for at least a test of these 2025 lows. Uh, but you, I, I mean, I don't trade silver. This is one of the reasons why you get candles like this. Um, but keep your eye out for the fact that we did close below this triangle. I do think silver could head uh, significantly lower over the next two weeks. Uh, above 22, basically at, back at 23, that would negate that setup. And then I'd have to start looking for a squeeze higher. Oil, still sideways, just been sideways forever. Um, major resistance, we're pretty close to major resistance at around 97.50 or so. Uh, first support, 91. Second support, 90. Final support down at 86. So kind of just play those levels. Uh, break and a close above 98.25, and we could start to see a move back up over $100 for oil. Um, Dollar Swiss, and some of you like trading Dollar Swiss for God knows what reason. Uh, respecting that previous low, just above, just above 92. Um, this fib is obviously useless as we just went straight down. Um, again, Dollar Swiss, like Dollar again, the dollar index could easily see a rally back up towards 95 before rollover and lower. Uh, so keep your eye on that possibility. Aussie Swiss actually might be a trade that I would be interested in trying to take long this week. Uh, similar to the other Aussie longs, I just think it's a pair that is due for a rally higher. 
We have this massive hammer here on Friday's daily candle. Um, resistance, we could really get as high as like 93.60, so 530 pips higher before we encounter major resistance. Um, that, again, would likely spell Euro Aussie sell-off. Um, so that's another pair that I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Uh, though I don't like to trade the Swissy pairs. Uh, getting uh, Shorting the Swiss dollar or the Swiss franc is appealing to me from a fundamental perspective. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, what else? Euro pound. Still like a higher, still sitting just above that 618, that trend line, and that 100 day EMA. Uh, not a great candle on Friday, but not a disastrous one either. It's kind of just sideways. Uh, so still do like Euro pound in hi higher in theory towards about 88. Uh, if we get down below 84, 60, 84 70, 84 65, uh, then it looks like we should, could see another move uh, to the downside. Uh, 84 being the first major support, and then 82-ish probably. Uh, 83, 82.50 would be the next level to keep your eye out on. All right, any, uh, it's a whole bunch of stuff I just went through. Anyone have any questions or requests of things that I did not cover? Questions, requests, thoughts, concerns, hopes, dreams, etc. Chat room should be up, Joe. If you're having trouble accessing it, uh, make sure you're going in through the. Uh, for some reason, when you try to go directly to the link, uh, it still sometimes comes up with a page not found. Uh, so try logging out, logging in, going through the members area to live chat room, uh, and it should be open. Or it is open. There are people in there who are talking to me. If you continue to have trouble finding it, uh, feel free to contact me on Skype, and I'll be happy to walk you through it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good that it was back up. It was not fun when it was down. Any other requests, questions, concerns, thoughts, etc.? All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me. As always, it's greatly appreciated. I will be in the chat room today. Happy to take any questions there. Again, we're back half hour away from the open. Uh, as far as I know, it should be a fairly quiet open. Um, some uh, Chinese, uh, China is on holiday uh, today, tomorrow, and even Tuesday, I believe. Uh, and Australia, I think, is on holiday tonight. Uh, so should be a quiet -er Sunday night uh, before things could probably start to pick up in the European session on Monday. So, see you in the chat room. Thank you again. Enjoy what's left of your weekend for those of you that have some time left in your weekend, and I will talk to you soon.